Welcome to Beating Cancer Daily. Beating stage four cancer for 30 years still takes my breath away every time I say it. I'm Saren, founder of the Comedy Cures Foundation, and I hope you'll join me for just a few minutes daily for the next 365 days so we may laugh, learn, maybe cry a little as we live our best days beating cancer daily together. So I just read an alarming headline that a study finds the correlation between loving practical jokes and having no one in your life trust you or love you. What? That came from the CBC, Canadian Broadcasting Company. No way. That is just for nasty pranks. That can't be for happy little fun pranks because I'm trusted and I'm loved. So fellow pranksters, don't be alarmed by that the way I was because I actually found a really cool study that was even more recent than that 2018 article from Columbia University. And I'm going to tell you why this psychologist says that doing pranks is fun and what it does for you. And I love them. And I'm actually going to share two little pranks with you that really made me smile. Now, if you've listened to Beating Cancer Daily before, this isn't Prankster Daily. This is actually Beating Cancer Daily. But these little pranks made me so happy through my entire cancer journey was stage four cancer, and they continue to delight me today. So I always take an episode every once in a while, and I share one of my little pranks so that we can all laugh and you can try it if you want, or you can just use it to bring you some comedic relief. In a 2022 article, Dr. Kathleen M. Pike, who's a professor of psychology and a director of global mental health at Columbia University, actually released an article that talked about why we feel good when we're doing pranks. My favorite one of her reasons is that pranks require good emotional intuition and stagecraft. And if they hit the right balance, they can set off belly aching laughter for all involved. (laughs) I love just thinking about them and then staging them. But you guys remember, I worked for Dick Clark Productions and I worked on super bloopers and new practical jokes. And we used to do these with celebrities and they were so elaborate. The ones I do now are just sweet and cute. So I don't have the budget that we had at Dick Clark to do all these amazing pranks with celebrities. Professor Pike goes on to say that when we share these moments of surprise, and I love surprises, it creates a laughter environment. And when that happens, that can actually build trust and break down barriers and promote teamwork. So again, these are gentle, fun pranks. These aren't terrifying pranks. Professor Pike talks about this shared moment of laughter when two people actually experience the end of the joke and they get to reminisce about it. And it often becomes part of storytelling in a relationship for many, many years. But she says that even laughing 12 seconds every day increases the likelihood of reporting higher levels of well-being. So you can make yourself laugh. We've done exercises about that, and I will continue to teach about laughter yoga or laughter meditation, but this is just really shared among friends. But I do love the anticipation of a funny prank. That's where I get so much joy, just envisioning how to do it, when to do it, what the reaction's going to be, and then all the laughter after. Now, I actually have been hired 
to do pranks on a massive corporate level. And for me, when I get to do a prank on hundreds of unsuspecting colleagues, it is so fun because they're never thinking that their employer would ever play a prank on them. So when I get to scheme up these great, funny pranks and then watch how it all unfolds and how much corporate play and creativity and unity that creates, it is exhilarating for me. Absolutely exhilarating. I find that when a joke is really well played, the person that it's done to or the group of people that it's done to have a lot of respect for the planning, the imagination, the effort, and sometimes the cost that goes into really staging something where you catch people by surprise. And I have just had the best time doing this. Of course, We are not talking about pranks that are hurtful or painful or go horribly wrong. The stakes aren't that high in the ones that I'm doing. They're just playful and creative. So here's two little baby ones that you can do. So the first small joke is that you get a rock at least the size of your hand and then you write on it in very vibrant colors turn me over. That's on one side, turn me over. And then on the opposite side, you write, you just took orders from a rock. (laughs) Make sure you paint it very vibrantly so it catches people's attention. That practical joke came from Reader's Digest. I didn't invent that one. And the other practical joke I wanted to share with you is very common. It's all over the internet. You take someone that has a lot of photographs, either on their desk or at their home, and you replace the photographs with a picture of yourself or of a sports star, an influencer, a person they have a crush on, or a celebrity or an incredibly talented creative person, but you just do it for every single photograph in every size. Now, don't disturb their original picture because you don't want to lose it or damage it. You just put yours on top of it. It will have a really funny shock value when they see that. So I hope you've enjoyed those two. They're very simple ones. Just stick your toe in the practical joke water if you want to try one. Here's a famous prank that the BBC conducted in 1957. They aired an episode showing Swiss harvesters picking spaghetti off trees and bushes, claiming that the region had had an exceptionally heavy spaghetti crop that year. (laughs) It's kind of funny that they did it in Switzerland and not in Italy. I would have thought Italy, even though I know pasta originally came from Asia, but it would be very funny, in my opinion, to have done that in Italy. They happened to pick Switzerland. But regardless, it's such a funny visual and it's such a funny concept that spaghetti would (laughs) grow on trees and bushes. Anyway, I hope you think about some kind but funny pranks that you can do on your loved ones. And if you think of any, you can send them to me at the Comedy Cures Foundation because I love to hear about it. Some people will do a prank and have somebody hiding with their cell phone so that they can actually record it and then they can watch it back and laugh. It's funny with or without recording it. Anyway, I would love to know what you're cooking up Share it with me. Go to the Comedy Cares Foundation and hit the record button or the write us button or the contact button and let me know what you're plotting and or how it went. And for anyone living with cancer, we have to find ways to find enjoyment, find creativity, 
stimulate our mind and get it off our cancer journey. So for me, pranks have been an incredible way to think of anything else but cancer. Have a blessed day. I'll see you tomorrow. I hope you guys know this, but Beating Cancer Daily is a listener and donor-supported podcast and community. So if you have some extra change, I'd love you to go to comedycures.org and make a donation today of whatever level is comfortable for you. And it will be tax deductible to the extent allowed by law because Comedy Cures is a nonprofit 501c3 organization founded from my chemo chair, April 1999, and we've been going strong ever since. So please consider making a donation today and help our community and this podcast thrive. Thanks so much. See you tomorrow. Guess what time it is? It's time for me to read the disclaimer. Beating Cancer Daily and the Membership Circle are not in lieu of medical advice or treatment. They are for entertainment purposes only. Please consult your healthcare team to review your best strategy. Thanks for listening.